Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make a very simple electric motor and at the end of the video I will give a brief explanation how it works. With all the materials and tools prepared it took me slightly under 7 minutes to go from the start to a working electric motor. Actually this video is just an addition to one other video in which I destroy this type of motors so if you are interested to see that and if you are interested to see some fire then I will leave a link to that video in the video's description and also at the end of this video. To make this electric motor I used the following cutting pliers, a knife, isolation tape, something round, permanent magnet, a piece of wire that has dielectric lacquer coating, a piece of regular wire that has its isolation removed, a AA battery and a sandpaper. Don't be too discouraged if you don't have this kind of wire with dielectric coating. If you understand how this motor works, you can also try to use a single stranded wire with regular isolation. So first thing that you have to do is to cut two pieces of isolated wire at the same size. For one of these wires, remove the isolation from both ends of the wire using sandpaper. Doing this you should see how the color of the wire slightly changes. That means that the isolation is removed. Once that's done, take both wires and bend them at the same shape as you see me doing it here. Now take another piece of the isolated wire and completely remove the coating from one end. Now twist it as you see me doing it here. Now remove the excess wire and remove the dielectric coating using knife or sandpaper, but in this case remove it only from one side of the wire. And now we're almost done. All what's left is to set up everything properly. One thing that you should pay attention to while assembling the parts is that the end of the coiled wire that had only half of its isolation removed should be placed in the support structure aka the bent wire that had not its uh, dielectric isolation removed.
Now connect the battery so that the current would flow through the coil and you're done. Now how this motor works? This will be the simple explanation to understand the mine idea. To better illustrate this, I created a structure that is very similar to our motor. In this case I have two pieces of wire without any isolation to support the coiled wire. And the isolation from both ends of the coiled wire in this case is completely removed. The arrow there is just to illustrate the orientation of the coil. Just so that you wouldn't get confused, this is also a permanent magnet, only in this case it has a bit weird shape. Now pay attention to the arrow when I connect the battery to this circuit. And now when I connect the battery the other way around, also the arrow is pointing in the other direction. So what's happening here? When current flows through the coil, magnetic field is created and this coil acts same as a permanent magnet that has so-called north pole and south pole. Same as in case with permanent magnets, opposite poles attract to each other, but the same poles retract from each other. By changing the polarity of the battery, we are also changing the direction in which the current is flowing. This is also the reason why the magnetic poles of the coil switches their place. When the battery is not connected, there is also no magnetic field. So during that moment, the coil is not interacting with the permanent magnet. Now we can try to understand why it was so important to remove the, the electric coating only from one side of the connection of our coil, referring to the motor that we previously built. By doing that we created the timing circuit. When we touched to the coil's connection with the wire that was coming from the battery, the current started to flow through the coil. Therefore coil started to turn. When it turned approximately by 90 degrees, it was disconnected from the battery because of the dielectric coating. At this moment the coil stops to interact with the permanent magnet, but due to the inertia created, it continues to turn. Once the coil comes into contact with the battery once more, it again starts to interact with the magnet, and so the rotation movement is continued. From this explanation you can see that it is very important in which orientation your connections are located at the moment when you are trying to start the motor. And this should also help you to find a problem in case something doesn't work properly. If you are interested to see how I destroy a few of this type of motors, feel free to click this video. Thank you for watching, until the next time, bye.